Hello and welcome back to the Cinema Tirana YouTube channel. I'm Stefano Tirana. We are a community of Christians from across denominations coming together to talk about media, movies, and the world through a Christian perspective. This week, we're going back in time and we're talking about Gnosticism. Before we get started, I just want to give a big thank you to everybody who's been subscribing, liking, and commenting. We're at uh, about 80 something subscribers. And uh, my plan is when we hit 100 is that I'm gonna go through the comments and I'll make a video responding to a whole, a whole bunch of people. It's been kind of hard to keep track of all the comments just because of the amount of support and also the amount of pushback, which is totally fair. Everybody's, the whole point of this channel is to facilitate discussion and disagreement. I bring my ideas and you guys bring yours. So thank you so much for supporting that. And now let's get back to the main topic of the video, Gnosticism. This video was inspired by a comment, so thank you. Gnosticism is a first century Christian heresy. Uh, it stuck around for a few centuries afterwards and it's kind of an umbrella term used to categorize quite a few different heretical beliefs and different people who propagated those beliefs. What we know about Gnosticism comes from two main sources. It is the early church fathers. They wrote about their experience in defending the Orthodox Christian faith against the Gnostics. Orthodox being lowercase o. I know some people got excited there. <laughs> they uh, are, for the most part, very, very critical of Gnosticism, which is uh, to be expected. So they're, uh, they're slightly biased. Um, I think it's fair to say on their characterization of Gnosticism, which is fair enough. You're trying to defend uh, the faith given to you by the apostles against these people. Another main source of information that we have about Gnosticism is uh, a collection of writing found at the Nag Hammadi Library in Egypt. So this was actually a, uh, a room full of books and scraps and uh, kind of like a dump that was connected to this building and they found it in the 1900s. And this gave us a, a major insight into writings from people who had Gnostic beliefs. This is this includes stuff like the Gospel of Thomas and other books that are part of the New Testament Apocrypha. These are books that uh, were never really in consideration for canonization. That's a whole, that's literally a whole video in itself, the process of canonization. So let's cover what Gnosticism is, what it isn't, uh, where it is today, and where we can find its influence in media. So Gnosticism has three main beliefs along with others. Since Gnosticism is a term that is placed on another group of people, a lot of these people would not have identified with all of these characterizations, but generally there's three beliefs that constitute us. Gnosticism. The first being is a distinction between material and spiritual with material being evil and the spiritual being good. Some work's been done on this to uh, connect it to Platonism, which is a fair assessment from what I can tell. I only read, <laughs> I, I read some Plato. I've read some Plato. The second belief is a division between the God of the Old Testament and a God of uh, the New Testament or of Jesus specifically. So the God of the Old Testament is seen as evil because he created the material world and the God of the New Testament is focused on uh, knowledge. So Gnosticism, the root word is gnosis in Greek and that means knowledge. So there's a, a very strong emphasis on salvation through uh, learning the secret mysteries of <laughs> the spiritual realm, <laughs> which is, uh, you know, that's not very Christian, is it? The third belief, which got the Gnostics in a lot of trouble, is a belief that uh, Jesus did not have a physical body. So they believe that Jesus had uh, some kind of spiritual form that looked like a physical body to other people. This includes him maybe not dying on the cross physically, and then him being born uh, kind of supernaturally in a way. This was a, a very major heresy as Christians believe that Jesus is 100% God and 100% man. And definitely 
not 50-50 or 100 God and zero man. So early Christians had to uh, define what orthodoxy was in their church councils and defend uh, the Orthodox Christian faith against these uh, kind of wacko theories. <laughs> and just to emphasize the uh, variety and the non-uniform nature of Gnosticism, uh, there's there's different spectrums of belief. Some may have affirmed the bodily nature of Jesus, but uh, accepted this kind of duality between the Old and New Testament. And um, there's uh, writings like the Proto-Evangelium of James, or the Proto-Gospel of Ga James. This is a text that is very well regarded in Orthodox and Catholic circles. This text has the story of the birth of Mary, the upbringing of Mary, um, the early life of Jesus as well, as long as well as another account of Jesus's birth, which is all, um, since this text is relatively early, might be based in some kind of truth. This would be, this would fall under the, the capital T tradition um, aspect of orthodoxy and Catholicism. Forgive me if I, that's kind of at the, the, the the edge of my knowledge when it comes to Orthodox and uh, Catholicism, so feel free to correct me. It is a, uh, the Proto-Evangelium of James is incredibly influential, uh, but uh, a main issue with it is the depiction of the birth of Jesus. Jesus is depicted as uh, beaming out through uh, bright light out of Mary, so that's not a very human birth, is it now? <laughs> So yeah, that's a basic breakdown of Gnosticism in the early church. Now we can ask ourselves, where is it now? And uh, it exists in a, in a very real form with the group called the Mandaeans. They are a group of people numbering about 100,000 that live in the Middle East. Uh, man, the term Mandaean comes from the Aramaic word uh, that means knowledge as well, so they're literally called Gnostics. They uh, believe that their final prophet was John the Baptist, and they have a very strong emphasis on ritual water cleaning and um, a very strong emphasis on hidden knowledge and a duality uh, between the god of this world, the god that created this world, and their spiritual god. They're not exactly on the rise or prevalent within uh, modern culture. Another way we can view Gnostic uh, beliefs as propagating is perhaps a little bit through transhumanism. Transhumanism is this uh, belief that uh, people are meant to surpass their physical body. So this is through the use of technology and trying to avoid death that way and extract the, the the soul or the consciousness um, into into something else, usually like a computer artificial intelligence program type thing. This kind of uh, spiritual materialist uh, worldview is very much uh, influenced by Gnosticism. Just a quick example as well is the uh, kind of division that people have between the old Testament God and the New Testament God, seeing as they, some people see them as having very different characters. But uh, I, I, you know, God still kills people in the New Testament, so <laughs> I don't think that holds up to a lot of scrutiny. And there's plenty of other ways that Gnostic beliefs have crept into modern thought. So the question is now, uh, what are some films that propagate Gnostic beliefs? And I think the main one here is The Matrix and that series of films. I made a video watching The Matrix for the first time. You can go see that. There I was kind of identifying certain Christian themes, but I didn't really have a good grasp of what the film was doing. It was taking a lot of Christian ideas, but not quite fully getting there, which was a little bit concerning at the time. I thought it was a cool movie, but uh, Here's how it relates to Gnosticism. So a major emphasis of this film is a emphasis on hidden knowledge. So Neo, as he exits the Matrix, gets this kind of divine revelation that his world is evil and the creator of this world is evil and using them for 
uh, electrical power, very much Gnostic ideas, and then it uh, kind of halfway plays with biblical themes. You have a character named Trinity, you have the idea of uh, messianism, and Neo operates as this kind of Gnostic messiah figure trying to liberate the world <laughs> or or liberate the Matrix from evil, which is, uh, which is, uh, you know, very, very Gnostic. Another film that kind of has this similar themes is the movie Her, a very aesthetically pleasing film, uh, but uh, also deals with this transhumanist uh, removal of the human spirit into the, uh, the ether internet world. <laughs> These artificial intelligences fall in love with humans and then kind of tempt them into outer space in a very trippy ending, <laughs> something like that. So what do we do about this as Christians is uh, we should be aware of um, the heresies that the church has fought with uh, throughout the ages. Try to identify them when they come up and where they come up. These ideas are, uh, are gonna stick around forever and we have to be aware to discern our way through those things. Uh, we have to affirm the, the, the bodily resurrection that is uh, promised to us in the Bible that um, God created this world and called it good and he is in the process through Christ and redeeming it, redeeming our body, soul, and spirit into his coming kingdom. So so let's, let's stick to those truths. Um, use the word of God to uh, our advantage. So hopefully you found this video uh, interesting or helpful in some way to give you a framework for understanding Gnosticism. It was a little bit part of my undergrad degree. So that was fun. As always, God bless you and thanks for watching.